Uh, somebody with uh, driving a green Explorer, you, you left your lights on, and it's a little cold outside, so the battery might die quick. You got a green Explorer. We just want to let you know your lights are on. Amen. Say worship. He is the sweetest friend I know, sweetest, no one compares that I know, I will worship him always, oh, everybody do it, I got to tell it. Come on and help me sing it. Oh, sweet I've got to tell it. Say the Lord is sweet Sweet to me, sweeter, sweeter, sweeter than the sweeter than the sweeter than the sweeter, sweeter than the sweeter than the sweeter than the sweeter, sweeter than the honey on the honeycomb, sweeter than the honey on the honeycomb. Sweeter than a honey on a honeycomb. 
now. Sweeter than a honey on a honeycomb. The Lord is. The Lord is. The Lord is. He is sweeter. I'm going to tell the world about it. I'm going to tell everybody. Sweeter than a honey on a honeycomb. Sweeter than a honey on a honeycomb. Come on, everybody, put your hands together. No matter what your problem is, you can always take it to the altar. Can I get one witness? Can I get one witness? Come on, put your hands together. Come on, Keith. Let me hear you say, oh. Let me hear you say, oh. hard couple of months you had enough but it's been hard for everyone you're not alone you've been waiting let it go and just move on make your way down to the altar hand it over and leave it there it's gonna be all right 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 so everything He'll work it out All of your problems Just bring them on down there You're gonna get an answer To your prayers with you I know you need a healing You're sick of being sick You need relief You're tired of the pressure You got all the stress And you need some peace Come on and get your breakthrough Or haven't you been suffering long enough Make your way down to the altar, hand it over, leave it there. It's gonna be all right. 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 So everything that you've been worried about, you need him to work it out. He'll work it out. All of your burdens, just bring them on down there. You're gonna get an answer to your prayers if you Oh You get an answer Oh yeah You get an answer yeah So you need to put it on put it on put it on So you need to put it on put it on put it on Oh prayer changes See, I know it does, who pray. So take it to the Lord in prayer. Ask him anything you want, cause prayer. You've been worrying and crying, crying and worrying. But you're not alone, you're not alone, no. See, you have a friend in Jesus. And he knows all about it. And he's gonna do what he promised you. Oh, yeah. So everything that you've been worried about, you need him to work it out. He'll work it out. All of your burdens, just bring them on down there. You're gonna get an answer to your prayers if you. It's gonna be all right. 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 So you need to put it on, put it on, put it on. So you need to put it on, put it on, put it on. It's gonna be all right. 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 So everything that you've been. 
been worried about. You need him to work it out. He'll work it out. All of your burdens, just bring them on down there. You're going to get an answer to your prayer if you... all right. That is true. That thing you've been worried about, just bring it to God. He's able. And he's well able to see you through. We're going to have recognition of guests by Sister Carla Hart. Announcement by Brother Ricardo Terman. Observation by our own pastor in that order, please. Good morning. Good morning. Um, Pastor Lockett, yes, Minister Simmons, and Wilder. Um, do we have any visitors? If so, please stand, state your name, uh, what church you're from, and any comments you have. Amen. Well, I'd like to thank each and every one of you all to Mount Pleasant Missionary Baptist Church. Um, it gives me great pleasure to welcome you. Um, you're welcome to sing, shout, pray, any way the Spirit leads you. You're welcome. Amen. Good morning, Mount Pleasant. Morning. Church concerns, no one's sick shut in. Sister Christine Martin, Sister Ruth Mills, Deacon Joseph Snow, Sister Helen McCord, Helen McCord <coughs> Brother Gregory Poindexter, Sister Murdis Curry, Sister Lula West, Sister Mildred Reese, Brother Henry Williams, Deacon James, Hick, James Hicks, J Deacon Brother James Dunn, Sister Annie Mance. Announcements. We just gonna skip that one. Um, <laughs> Pleasant Grove Baptist Church will be having a missionary and evangelism workshop on Saturday, <coughs> February 28th <laughs> at 11 a.m. Our very own Reverend Patricia Lasby will be the teacher. Anyone interested in serving as VBS director or assistant director, please see Pastor Lockett or Sister Cunning Moss today. We'll, we will be celebrating our pastor's anniversary on Sunday, March 8th at 2.30 p.m. All right. The youth ministry is selling Otis Meyer cookies. If you would like to place, or, place an order, please see a youth or a youth advisor. All monies are due by Sunday, March 8th. 2014 individual contribution statements and 2015 church calendars can be picked up in the church office at the service. The deaconess in charge of communion and baptism for the month of March are Sister Bronda Reynolds and Sister Janola Cobbs. Youth meeting will be held Saturday, March 7th, 9 a.m. to 10.30. All youth, please make plans to attend. 
Also, please don't forget to come and get the extra homework tutoring help from 5.15 to 6.30 on Wednesdays. Thought for the week. People always get into trouble when they think they can handle their lives without God. Amen. Scripture for the year, Ephesians 4, 11 through 12. And he gave some apostles and some, pro and some prophets and some evangelists and some pastors and teachers for the perfecting of the saints, for the work of the ministry, and for the edifying of the body of Christ. Prayer warriors, pr the prayer warriors will be in the male Sunday school room immediately after service for anyone who needs prayer. Thank you. Amen. Give them a hand. Good morning, my brothers and my sisters. You are looking so lovely and blessed on today. And it's such a pleasure to see you and have you worshiping with us on today. We thank God for all of our visitors that have come from near and far to worship with us. And we pray that while you are here, that you will experience the presence, the peace, and the power of God. And that when you leave this place, you will know you have been in the presence of God. So feel free to worship God the way that you feel like worshiping him. Whatever God means to you, worship him and let him know that you love him on today. It's good to see some folk from Macon, Georgia, my hometown. Amen. And to see she's a minister. I know you're with your husband. If you want to come up here, you can. If you want to stay there, you can. All right. Just want to make the offer. It's first Sunday, isn't it? Anybody with the birthday in the month of March, please stand. Anybody, anybody, <laughs> visitors, members, amen. Oh, shucks now. <laughs> Go ahead and stay standing. We're going to sing to y'all. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, God bless. Amen. We pray many blessings upon you during this month and on your special day. We pray that as you continue to have more birthdays, that God will continue to bless you and that your love for him may continue to grow and that he may do great and wonderful things in your life. All right. Any marriage anniversaries in the month of March? What? Well, Amy, we got to work on that month. <laughs> but again, we, we, we truly honor marriage here at, at Mount Pleasant, and we pray that for all people who are married, that God will continue to bless and strengthen your marriage, and that as you continue to live together, that God will make the love between you two grow even more and more, that, God, that people may not see your marriage, but see God in your marriage. Amen? Amen. Amen. On um, yesterday... Um, we had the homegoing services for Brother Ronnie McCord. And it just hit me today that he's gone. And so let us continue to be in prayer for his family, uh, for his wife. Let us continue to see about her. And he had family coming from uh, New York, Chicago, Philadelphia, all around. And let's pray that they have a safe trip back home and continue to do what we do, see about one another. Amen. And on yesterday, there was an oratorical uh, contest sponsored by the Deltas. And while they were there, we had 18 girls of the Mount Pleasant Baptist Church drama ministry worship and praise God to the song, My Soul Says Yes. Amen. amen. Are the dancers here today? If you're here, stand up. Uh, and every time, amen. Amen. <laughs> amen. Bless you. I, I hate I missed that because every time they do that right there, Something gets all over me, in me, and gets me act all crazy and stuff. <laughs> we thank God for our, our drama ministry, our dance team. And in the oratorical contest, in our middle grades, we had one honorable mention, LaAngel Cummings. Are you here, LaAngel? <laughs> Amen. In second place, Lauren Struble. All right.
everybody. That's in our middle grades. In our high school, first place, Mr. Master Davon Crockett, who's back serving in the, in the audio and visual place. We thank God for our parents who uh, allowed for our children to take, uh, partake in this. It's a wonderful experience and a wonderful time to be able to stand before people and be able to articulate yourself uh, in such an awesome manner. We thank God for all of our children who have gone, and as always, they always do good by God. And we thank you for all that you have done. This is March, and it's our Men's Emphasis Month. Our sermons will be geared around the men. Women, y'all can listen to, don't stay home, please don't stay home. It might get empty up in here. But it's geared around the men. And I want us to bring some men in. Men that don't go to church. Don't get men from other folk church and bring them over here. We want some men that you know that don't go to church. Just invite them to come and to worship with us. Uh, we want some men coming to prayer meeting and the Bible study uh, to participate in everything that we're doing here in the month of March. Amen? Amen. So let's focus and let's pray for our men. All righty. I think... Am I missing any announcements? <coughs> Tomorrow, 6 o'clock p.m., leadership meeting. All leaders need to be in place. If you cannot make it, you need to send your vice or somebody in your place. If you are not there, by 10 minutes after 6, Sonia will be calling you to see if you are on the way or if somebody is in your place. This is a serious matter. There's places that we want to go as a church, and we as leaders have to come together that we may be able to do the will of God. And so please, leaders, let's come. And, and I'm holding the, the ministries accountable to ask your leader when you have your next meeting, what did pastor say in leadership meeting? Amen? Amen. 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 Get quiet around there, but that's all right. Uh, right now, I'm going to ask for the parents and the family of Davon Quamid Collins and Devin Quaman Hordens to please come forward. Also, the family of Dalton Jace Jackson to come forward. And the family of Bryston Williams to please come forward. Amen. It is wonderful to see parents who realize that their children are important and that they need the help of Almighty God in raising and rearing their children. But not only God, but they need the help of the church. And so these families have come on this day to stand before God, heaven, and this congregation, look at them, and this congregation. We don't Christian and we don't sprinkle children, but in the Baptist faith, we dedicate them back to God. And then we teach them so that when they are old enough that they can make a decision for themselves to choose Jesus as their Savior. Deuteronomy 6, 4 through 7 says, Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God, the Lord is one. Love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul and with all your strength. These commandments that I give you today are to be upon your hearts. Impress them on your children. Talk about them when you sit at home and when you walk along the road when you lie down and when you get up. Friends, family and congregation, we are here gathered together at this time at the invitation of Simone Hordens, Quay Lance Collins, Sinitria Walker, and Baruco Williams Jr. to share in this very precious 
serious and yet joyful occasion. It is always a joy when children come in to your home. Children are a blessing and a gift from God. And we thank God for all of these children. God has been gracious to these parents and blessed them with his own kids that these parents may raise them to know God and to love God, to serve God, and to live a life before them that they may see God in their parents. God established the home as one of the most vital institutions on earth. God said to Adam and Eve, be fruitful and multiply and replenish the earth. And since that time, God has blessed man and woman with the wonder of birth. And so we come today not only to ask special blessings on these lives, but also to challenge and encourage these parents to be godly mothers and to be godly fathers who would care for their children these gifts from God and give every opportunity to live the kind of life before your children that God wants you to live. So in this act of dedication, I'm going to ask, for the sake of time, I'm going to just say parents, three questions. No, I'm going to call your name. Pronounce it wrong, you know who you are. <laughs> so smile and say, okay. Do you, Simone Hardens, Queen Lance Collins, Sinitria Walker, and Barico Williams Jr. <coughs> present Davon Collins, Devin Hordens, Dalton Jackson, and Bryson Williams to God? If so, say we do. Do you stand before, uh, before us and before God today seeking to be godly parents? If so, say we do. Do you commit before God and these witnesses that you would do all that is within your power to maintain your home where your children live and be cared for, a home that is filled with love and that is filled with the Holy Spirit? and to bring your children up to know, love, and honor God with all their heart. If so, say, we do. And to the rest of the family, do you, before God, promise to be godly friends and godly relatives that will raise these children and support this mother and father in a way that is in a godly manner that the children may see God in you. If so, say, we do. Yeah. With that, I remind you again that God has graciously given you these children. They belong to you. But in a greater way, they belong to God. <clears throat> and I remind you of the great responsibility that is placed before you because of the birth of this child. God has given you this child. The world is filled with children and new generations who do not know God. And I charge you on today to turn that thing around. That we will raise godly children. That we will show God in our home and in the community. When we're in the car and when we're talking on the phone. That our children in our homes will see God and know God. That when they grow up, they will know the ways of God and not depart from them. I challenge you on today to grow in your walk in Christ that you may mature, that God may be able to do all that he has called you to do in life. All right, let me get my ministers. Each one of y'all go get a baby. And the other ones can come up here. How many we got? One, two.
Amen. Let us pray. God, we are here looking to heaven from where these children have come from. God, we ask now blessings upon their lives. We ask now, God, that you would place people in their lives that will protect them from the dangers of this world. We pray, Lord God, that you will put people in their lives and in their paths that will model for them what it is to be a Christian. God, by your Holy Spirit, we ask that you would, right now, begin to prepare their lives and prepare their minds and their hearts for a life of service for you. Lord God, put your hand on these children and allow for your Holy Spirit to live in them that when they get of age, of understanding, that they will know that they need a Savior and they will accept Jesus Christ as their Savior. Lord God, these children are precious to you and they're precious to us. And so God, we entrust them and dedicate them to you right now that they will grow up and be the children that you have called them to be, that they will do great things in your name, Lord God. We claim right now that Satan will not have these children, but God, your Holy Spirit will seal them and keep them, Lord God, that they will walk in victory, that they will walk in the destiny that you have called for them to be, that they will be victorious in everything that they do, and when trouble comes, God, they will know how to lift up their voice unto heaven and cry out to you and that you will hear their prayers, Lord God, and answer them. God, these are your children. So, Lord God, take control of them. Do great and mighty things in their lives right now, God. Though we don't want you to wait till later on, but get, begin right now to plant seeds and plant dreams and plant desires that come straight from heaven. Thank you, God, for these gifts. Bless and keep right now is my prayer. In Jesus' name we do pray. Amen. Amen. this family I thank God for you and I look forward to seeing great and wonderful things coming from this family and from these children go in peace go in victory and go in the presence of God God bless you Anybody love them on today? You want to tell them anything today? Go ahead and tell them he's listening.
day to praise him. Just want to tell you. Hallelujah. It's giving time now. And we show our genuine love to God by what we decide to do with our tithes and offering that we bring to him. And I want to say money, but it ain't our money. It's God's money. And all belong to him. And he had entrusted us to being good stewards of what he had given us. And you show your genuine love and trust to God when you decide to give according to what he has already prescribed. Trust God. And see, and see how God really operates and moves in your life and see him be faithful unto his word and meet every need you have. So now as we come now, we ask that you would stand. Father God, we come now thanking you, God. Singing songs that we love you, Lord God. And we trust you and we bless your name. So Lord God, let that love manifest over into our genuine giving and our living every single day, God. We pray now, Father God, for one another. We pray for every household. We pray for every family now. Every need being met right now, God, that we may continue to walk in the light of you, Lord. Bless this offering now. Bless these tithes that are coming into the storehouse now, God, that it may be meet in your house. Increase and multiply every need right now that we may truly be met, God. We trust you now, Lord God, and we show our trust by coming and giving. And so now, bless, keep, is our prayer. Have your way in this service. In Jesus' name we do pray. Amen.
as we prepare for altar call. With this being men's month, I'm going to ask that all men will first come to the altar so that we can pray for you. All men, if you would, please, sir, come to the altar. And after the men have come to the altar, everybody else can fill in behind them. If there are some men here on today that are on your mind and your heart, we ask that you will pray for them and pray for our men. Look at this. Look at this. Hallelujah. Yeah, come on, boys. Come on, young, young men of every age. And now we ask that all others who want to come to the altar, if you would please come. Heavenly Father, we come now to your altar. We ask your men that have been called out, God. Yes. And Lord God, as we stand before you, we say yes, Lord, yes. to your will, to your way, and to your word, God. Yes. Lord God, as Joshua acknowledged the truth of Israel, he said, now for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. Yes. But we got to realize that you are a holy God and that you are a righteous and true God. And we can't come no any kind of way to serve you, Lord. So, Lord God, as we come now by the precious blood of the Lamb, who is and was to come, Lord, and we pray that you would cleanse us and wash us now and make us whole that we may truly lead according to your way, God. We come aligning ourselves with your word, Father God, that your spirit may fill us, that we may do your will, God. Father, strengthen us right now, Lord God, that we may truly be upright and righteous in that sight, God to lead our family according to your word, God, yes. that we may be an example. They may see the goodness of you reflecting through them, God. And so, Father, we thank you for each individual that's at this altar now, God. We pray for your blessing and your favor to be upon them right now, God, to strengthen them and keep them right now in your way, your will, and your word, God. Bless everyone at this altar now, God. Oh, we need you right now, Lord God, to show us your way, God. To help us right now to walk according to your will, God. To renew the spirit of our mind right now. That we may truly be transformed right now. To know what is good and pleasing in thy sight, God. Lord God, help us to love our wives now. And treat them with the utmost respect, God. Help us to do your will right now by our Lord God. And to love them as you have loved the church, Lord Jesus. Help us right now to teach our children now. To walk in righteousness and holiness now. Help us to show them the right way of you, God. Help us right now. Father God, to be about your business, Father. Truly, we come before you right now, seeking in your face, God. Oh, we come before you right now, praying for your Holy Spirit to fill us right now. To follow the fresh on us right now, Father God. That we may truly align ourselves with you, God. Knowing that you are Lord of Lord and King of King. The Alpha and the Omega and the beginning and the end, God. So we come before you right now, Lord Jesus. Thanking you right now. Oh, that we may truly be those ones that stand in the gap for the ones that don't have fathers now, God. We pray for your blessing to be upon us now, God. 
We pray that you'll continue to teach us right now, Father God, to honor you and have reverence and fear for you, God. Father, bless every household right now that's represented. Increase, enlarge, multiply, meet every need right now, Father God. Let your joy, your love, your peace rest, rule, and reign in that place, God. Your grace abound right now, God. And have mercy upon our soul, God. Bless our wives that they may follow us as we follow you, Christ. Help us right now to truly honor you in all that we do, God. That others may see you, God, a portrait of love, God. Hallelujah, God. We thank you right now that you will continue to bless our children now. Continue to keep them now. Go with them in school. Help them to realize that they must listen. They must listen, God. And be willing to follow the directions and do what is right, God. Help them right now. You'll keep a head protection all around them now, God. Place people in their lives to speak into them right now, Father. To show them the right way, God. And help us right now, Father. That's a church, God. Go about your business now, Lord. Bless the man of God that you have anointed here to proclaim your gospel now, God. We pray for your spirit to fill him up now, God. To give him a right now word now, Father God. That may nurture us and fill us and help us and heal us and deliver us now, God. To know it is all in the word. So we come hungry and thirsting for the word today, God. Now you give him the word that it may go forth now, Father. Because you said they'll never turn him forward. So bless him now, God. Bless his wife and his children now. Continue to keep them now, Lord. And Father God, we pray for the sick and shed in now. Touch right now. Heal right now. Strengthen right now. Bless our sister McCord right now, Father God. Give her strength right now, Father. Oh, as we lay her husband to rest on yesterday, God. But let her know you are right there in her bosom now that you may comfort and love her. And all the family that will read now, God. Go weird now, Lord. Now, Father, as we come, we come unto you now, unto your altar. Casting all our cares upon you now, Lord. And Father God, sometimes people just don't realize or understand all that we go through as men, God. And so, but we know you know. We know you understand. And you see our pain. You see all that we're going through. Yeah. And so we come before you now, God, casting all our cares upon you now, Lord. Trusting you and knowing that you are faithful, God. And you said you would give us rest. So we pray for only the peace that only you can give, God. So let it flow like a river right now, Father. Let us not be worried or anxious for nothing, God. But come to you in prayer and supplication, making our requests known unto you, God. We thank you now that you may guard our mind and our hearts now, Father. And so, Father, as we lie before you now, we just pray for your direction and your guidance. We pray for your Holy Spirit to fill us now. We pray that you would keep us now, that we may walk in the right path now, God, that we may be able to stand in the gap for someone else, God, and that you may walk up and down this aisle and see that there was one, that was two, that was five, that was ten, that was able to stand in the gap. So we thank you now, Lord, for your blessing and your favor upon this congregation and upon your means now. Go with us and keep us. It's our prayer. In Jesus' name we do pray. Amen. 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 Amen.
heart and soul say yes. Will your spirit still say yes? There is more that I of thee will your heart and soul say yes will your heart and soul say yes Your spirit still say yes. If I told you what I really need, will your heart and soul? Say yes. Will your heart and soul say yes? Yeah, 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 yes. Will your spirit still say yes? Yeah. Oh, you what I really need from thee. Will your heart and soul say yes? So just say. And tell the Lord yes. Say yes. Yeah, 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 yes. Say I'll obey Jesus. I won't stray, Jesus. But this time I made up in my mind. I made up in my mind. I'll say, say it, say it. My soul said yes. My mind said yes. My heart.
There is more that I you higher there is more there is more don't be afraid of men in their faces don't be afraid don't be afraid don't be afraid yeah there is more say yes to your way and to your will for what more can we do what will you have us to do for you have done everything for us now God we ask that you would speak from the balcony of heaven that we here in Thompson, Georgia may hear your voice and understand your word and that you may continue the transformation process that you started the day that we said yes. Holy Spirit, continue to have your way as our prayer. In Jesus' name we do pray. Amen. As we prepare for this message, just a question for the men on today. If anybody else want to listen, you can too. Are you saved? Are you saved? Acts chapter 4. Acts chapter 4, verses 13 through 14. Acts 4, 13 and 14. Acts chapter 4, verses 13 and 14. And it reads, When they saw the courage of Peter and John, and realized that they were unschooled ordinary men, they were astonished, and they took note that these men had been with Jesus. But since they could not see, but since they could see the man who had been healed standing there with them, 
there was nothing they could say. God wants to talk to the men on today about ordinary men. Ordinary men. This message, although it is for everyone, it is directed to the men. God has a great and marvelous work for us to do here at Mount Pleasant. I believe that God has given me a vision for Mount Pleasant where I see us doing great and marvelous work for the Lord in this community and among ourselves. But one of the key ingredients to ministry is the men. Somebody ought to say amen. One of the key ingredients is the men. And it is my prayer that through this message that God will move on the hearts of the men to be more involved and active in the life and ministry of Mount Pleasant. We have some good and some godly men who are already active and involved and invested in the life of Mount Pleasant. But I just believe that there are some more men who God is calling and that have a desire to serve God in ministry. And I believe that one reason why men do not do so and become active is because they may feel as if God can't use them or they don't want to fail. But I pray that in this message on today, that the men will be inspired to come forward. You know, sometimes we think that in order for God to use us, we have to dress a certain way. We think that not only do we have to dress a certain way, but that we have to talk a certain kind of way or that we have to look a certain kind of way. There was a man by the name of John the Baptist. He preached repentance and people came to hear him from Jerusalem and all of Judea and the whole region of Jordan. They confessed their sins and were baptized by him in the Jordan River. John the Baptist did not preach in the synagogues or preach in the temple, but he preached out, yes, in the wilderness, in the desert of Judea. John was a man that was used mighty by God, but if others looked at him, he would look as if he could do nothing for God, for John's clothes were made of camel's hair. He had a leather belt around his waist, and his food was locusts and wild honey. Yeah, people came from all around just to hear this man named John preach the word of God. And many were baptized after hearing John the Baptist preaching. He didn't look like anybody that would come and speak for God. He didn't preach or speak in the buildings, the fine buildings, where men often taught about God. But he was a man mightily used by God. And God uses ordinary men. There was another man by the name of Moses. He was taking care of his father-in-law Jethro's flock one day. He was on the far side of the desert. When an angel of the Lord appeared to him in a burning bush. The angel said that he had heard the cries of the people and he had seen their misery. He said to Moses, go tell Pharaoh to let my people go. Moses said, "Uh, look here now. I hear what you're saying. But, but. But I cannot speak with eloquence 
and I'm not quick with it enough to respond to Pharaoh when he asked me questions. Moses said, and another thing, I don't think the people will believe me. But look at Exodus chapter 4, 11 through 12. It says, the Lord said to him, who gave man his mouth? Who makes him deaf or mute? Who gives him sight or makes him blind? Is it not I, the Lord? Now go. I will help you speak. And I would teach you what to say. You know, God doesn't call the equipped, but equips those that he calls. Oftentimes, we, we think we have to look a certain kind of way or, or know certain things in order to serve the Lord. But if you just say yes, I'll go. God will equip you what you need. Not to do your work, but to do his work. But listen to what Moses said in response to God. Moses said, I hear you, Lord, but can you do me a favor? In verse 13, he says, oh, Lord, please send someone else to do it. Is that your response? Do you feel God leading you to a certain ministry? Or leading you to do certain things for him. But you look at yourself or you think that you're not qualified. You don't know enough or, or you can't do it. And Lord, please send somebody else. But can I tell you right now that if you feel a desire in your soul. Now this is if you're saved. If you feel a burning and a desire to serve the Lord. That is God telling you that he has work. For you to do. Because what God does, he calls you to do something. He calls us to do something that is what we can't do on our own. Yeah, when God calls you to do something, you look at it as if, God, no, 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 not me. I know you all wise and everything, and, and you don't make no mistake, but, but me, God? Yes, you. Moses still didn't believe it. Moses still doubted God. But when he finally said yes to God and stepped out on faith, God sent Aaron to go with Moses. See, when God calls you to do something, he don't show you the whole picture. He doesn't show you where your help is going to come from. He just wants to see if you will step out on faith. And when Moses stepped out on faith, God gave him Aaron to be able to speak for him to Pharaoh. He sent Aaron to help him. He sent Aaron to support him. He sent Aaron to be right there by his side. God would speak to Moses. Moses would speak to Aaron. And Aaron would speak to Pharaoh. They told Pharaoh that God said, let his people go. But Pharaoh's heart was hard. So God sent ten plagues on Egypt. And after that tenth plague, Pharaoh broke down and he told them, y'all get out of here. Get away from us. Take what you need. Just be gone. So here it is, the children of Israel are free from their oppressors and they are headed to the promised land. Moses is probably in disbelief at what God had done on Egypt. They had cried so long and thought they would never be free. But God did not come down himself, but he chose a man by the name of Moses. To do mighty works for the Lord. And when they came to the Red Sea, they couldn't go left, they couldn't go right. Pharaoh was fast upon their tracks, and the Red Sea was in front of them. God said, Moses, 
stretch out your hand. And when Moses stretched out his hand, God parted the Red Sea. You see, God is all powerful, but, but God ain't going to do it all by himself. He's looking for a few men, a few ordinary men that have faith enough in God to step out on God's promises and see the good works that God can do. Brothers, I'm here to tell you on today that God uses ordinary men. When God got fed up with King Saul, he sent the prophet Samuel to Jesse of Bethlehem because God had already chosen the next king, and it was one of the sons of Jesse. Listen to 1 Samuel 16, verse 6 through 7. When they arrived, Samuel saw Elib and thought, surely the Lord's anointing stands here before the Lord. But the Lord said to Samuel, do not consider his appearance or his height, for I have rejected him. The Lord does not look at the things man looks at. Man looks at the outward appearance. But the Lord looks at the heart. Oftentimes we think we have to look a certain way, uh, be a certain height, uh, have some kind of uh, charisma about ourselves. But God is not concerned about the outward appearance. But what God is looking at, he's looking at the heart. He's looking at the things on the inside that man cannot see. We get caught up with what we look at and what we see. And we choose those things that look good to us. Anybody ever chose something that looked good to you? A few days later, that which you thought looked good to you was no good to you? Because you were looking at what pleased your eyes. Found out there was no goodness in them. Just because it looked good on the outside don't mean it's good on the inside. God uses ordinary men. All throughout history, when God led and delivered his people, he used ordinary men to do some extraordinary things. Yes, lady, he used some women too, but we talk about the men on today. In case somebody say, he used women too, I know. You see, we often think that we have to be perfect. That we have in order to be used by God. We often think that we're not as qualified as somebody else in order to serve God. We often ask or think, God, can you use me? Well, let's see if he can use you. <clears throat> let's look at who he used. Noah got drunk. Abraham was really old. Isaac played favorites. Jacob was a liar and a cheater. Joseph was abused. Moses was a murderer. Gideon was insecure. Samson was a womanizer. David had an affair and conspired and committed murder. Jeremiah and Timothy were too young. Elijah was moody and suicidal. Elijah was bald-headed. Jonah ran from God. Jeremiah was a whiner. Peter was impulsive. Zacchaeus was too short. Thompson doubted the Lord. Paul persecuted the Lord's people. And Lazarus, he was dead. Now, what's your excuse for not letting God use you? God is looking for some ordinary men who will hear his voice, step out on faith, and serve God and do some extraordinary things that only God can do in your life. 
It don't matter about your past. It don't matter how much you messed up. It don't matter how much you know or don't know. It don't matter how much money you have or don't have. But all you got to do is have faith. In the Lord. God is looking for some ordinary men. Women, stop talking down about our men and lift them up. Stop talking about how sorry they are. But lift them up. Start praying for our men. Stop complaining about our men. Because can I tell you something? Men are human too. Men hurt too. Men have pain for past too. But men also have pride. And when we feel as if we're not doing what we're supposed to do as a man, then men get depressed. When men have a hard time taking care of family and making ends meet, they get depressed. When men can't give like they want to live, they, they get depressed because we got some pride. Because we want to take care of what we love. And so what we need to do is support our men. Pray for our men. Now, if, if he just low down and sorry... Pray for him and pray for yourself. Yeah. Talk to God about it. Because women, if he does something with you, he could do something with him. Because if the truth be known, you ain't all that. But all of us need God. Because if you're saved, you become a new creation. All things have passed away. And behold, all things have become new. So that sorriness that was in that joker can be greatness that is in him if you take him to the Lord. Tell him how good he is. Tell him it's going to be all right. Tell him I'll walk beside you day and night. God is looking for some ordinary men. I ain't had that in my notes, but I guess somebody need to hear that. <laughs> Second Corinthians chapter 4, verse 7 says, But we have this treasure in jars of clay to show that this all-surpassing power is from God and not from us. Brothers, we are ordinary men. These clay jars that he's talking about is talking about our frailness and our weakness and our abilities to accomplish things. But it don't matter about how frail we are on the outside. If we have the power of God working on the inside, greater is he that is in me than he that is in the world. When God is working on the inside, however weak we are on the outside, God will give us strength to accomplish and to do great and marvelous things for him. Ordinary on the outside but extraordinary on the inside. In our scripture for today, Peter and John were before the Sanhedrin. In chapter 3 of, of Acts, we see that the day before Peter and John were going to the temple at the time of prayer, and they saw a man who was at the temple gate called Beautiful. This man sat at the gate every day, and he begged for alms, he begged for whatever he could get, money or food, because he was crippled from birth. Peter looked at him. He said, look upon us. Peter said, silver and gold I don't have, but I'm going to give you what I, I do have. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, walk. Now look at what happened. The man didn't just stand up. But Peter stretched out his hand and helped him to get up. And when he helped them to get up, 
his feet and his ankles gained strength. This man who never walked before began to stand on his own two feet and he began to walk and he began to shout and he, he began to jump and he went with Peter and John into the temple shouting and praising God. You know, we ought to be more like him. When we know that God has done something for us, we ought to let it be known. When we know that God has done something for us that we couldn't do ourselves or, or nobody else could do, we ought to give him the praise. They were walking in the temple. And the people turned and they recognized the man that was walking. They said, hold up. He just asked me for 50 cents. He'd been asked to be for stuff his whole life. And now... Here he is walking around the temple. Not just walking, but jumping and praising God. Let's go see what's going on. Peter was holding his hand and they went in amazement and, and Peter recognized that they were amazed. Peter looked at them and he began to let them know that this man was healed by the power of Jesus Christ. Peter began to preach to them Jesus crucified and resurrected. Peter began to preach the gospel, the good news of Jesus Christ. And as they were doing that, the priest, the Sanhedrin, and the captain of the temple guard came up to them and were deeply disturbed. They were upset. They were mad because they were preaching and teaching Jesus. They threw Peter and John in jail. They stayed there until the next day. The next day, they brought them out and stood them before the Sanhedrin. They gave the testimony that this man was healed by the power of Jesus. They also said to the Sanhedrin that the salvation is found in no one else. For there is no other name under heaven given by which men could be saved. They spoke with boldness. They spoke with courage, and the Sanhedrin could not say a word because the man who was healed was standing right there beside them. Peter and John spoke with courage. They spoke with authority. They spoke with power, and the Sanhedrin were amazed that they had such courage and such boldness and spoke with such authority because they said, ain't these men just some unlearned, ordinary, unschooled men? How can these men who have not gone to the greatest rabbinical schools of the day, who never set foot in a class, these men that walk with Jesus, how can they talk so boldly? How can they heal a man that was crippled since birth? They were amazed and they were astonished. But one thing that they had to recognize, although they were some unschooled, ordinary men, one thing that the Sanhedrin even testified about. One thing that they had to say. Although they were unschooled. Ordinary men. They've been with Jesus. Did you get that? They were ordinary. But they did extraordinary things. Because they've been with Jesus. Men. We are ordinary. Some of us are unschooled and unlearned. Some of us are rich. Some of us are broke. Some of us are tall. Others are short. But it don't matter. As long as we get with Jesus, we can do some extraordinary things in life. And God, my brothers, is looking for and calling for some ordinary men to spend some time with Jesus that God can do some extraordinary things in their lives. The Marines 
are looking for a few good men. But God is looking for some ordinary men. Some ordinary men who would trust him. Some ordinary men who would step out on faith and serve him. And if you're here today and you feel as if God himself is talking into your heart, if you feel something on the inside, then maybe, just maybe, God is calling you in your ordinary state to take Jesus by the hand, to walk with him and, and talk with him and spend some time with him because God has some greater things ahead for you. You ordinary right now. You've had some dreams and, and visions of doing some great things. But you look at yourself and say, not me. You're like Moses, God. Send somebody else. But on today, God is talking to the men. God is saying, I'm looking for some ordinary men who would step out on faith and trust me that I can do some extraordinary things. And like all of God's children said, amen. Before you can serve God, you must be saved. There on Calvary, Jesus bled, died, suffered for the sins of humanity. But early on Sunday morning, God raised him from the grave with all power in his hands. Are you saved? Are you saved? And if there's one here today who's in need for a Savior, the doors of the church open. And if you're here today and you're ready to accept Jesus Christ as your Savior, will you come? You may be here looking for a church home. I want to make this place Mount Pleasant Missionary Baptist Church your church home. Will you come? Will you come on today? Lord, do it in order to get to heaven. We must go by the cross. Have you been to the cross? Have you been washed in the blood? If not, he'll do it. He'll do it just for you. Is there one? Right Is there one? Will you come? Lord, do it. Come in faith. Come trust in God. You may be seated. There's nothing too hard for God. Lord, do it. story about the blind man who could not see but one day he heard Jesus was passing by but he said, lay your hand, lay your hand, lay your hand on me. This when he cried out, oh, Lord, do it. Ooh. 
There's nothing too hard for God. Lord, do it. Me, do it for me. Do it for me. For I have received the Lord, that which also I delivered unto you, that the Lord Jesus, the same night which he was betrayed, took bread. When he had given thanks, he broke it and said, Take, eat, this is my body, which is broken for you. This do in remembrance of me. And at the same manner, also he took the cup, when he had supped, saying, This cup is the New Testament in my blood. This do ye, as often you drink it, in remembrance of me. For as often you eat this bread, and drink this cup, you do show the Lord's death till he come. Wherefore, whosoever shall eat this bread and drink this cup of the Lord unworthy shall be guilty of the body and the blood of the Lord. But let a man examine himself, and so let him eat of that bread and drink of that cup. For that he that eateth and drinketh unworthy, eating and drinketh damnation to himself, not discerning the Lord's body. For it is called men are weak and sickle among you, and men are asleep. For we will judge ourselves, we should not be judged. But when we are judged, we are chastened of the Lord that we shall not be condemned with the world. Wherefore, my brethren, when you come together to eat, tear one for another. And if any man hunger, let him eat at home, and that you come not together unto condemnation, and the rest will I set in order when I come. Let us pray. Father, we come now, once again, at this point in the service now, giving you glory, honor, and praise, God, of the holy ordinance that you have left behind, Father, as we come partake of your holy communion, Lord. We pray now that you will search our hearts and our mind now, Lord God, that it may be truly coming before you being examined of oneself now, that we may truly ask of you to heal us and deliver us now and set us free now from those things that God has burned and bound down. Lord, we are so grateful now to be able to partake of this now. Now, Father, we pray that you will continue to bless and keep this church as we may walk in the spirit and the power of your might. It's in Jesus' name we do pray. Amen. Amen. 